Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. At the end of this gospel today, the first one, the Lord says that your reward shall be great. And then, if you're careful, if you look, read carefully, you'll see that he immediately tells you what the reward is. So let's talk about this golden rule and the reward that is great. So he says that, baby, you're really distracting me, really distracting me. You gotta be quiet. As you would that men would do to you, do you also unto them. Now that's the golden rule. Some people understand this golden rule as sort of a rule of attraction. So like if I do good things, people will do good things to me. Or quid pro quo. I'll do good, then you'll do good. If I do good to you, you'll do good to me. That's not the golden rule. The golden rule is that you use your, your mind, your brain, to understand what is good, what you would want, and you do that for others, irrespective of what they do for you. Now that's perhaps the hardest commandment to follow in all of the gospel, to literally do good to everyone, regardless of what they do to you. Now the Lord goes on to explain in some detail why this is so important and what it does for you, how it really changes you and makes you a holy soul. And here he goes, he says, if you love them which love you, what thank have you? For sinners will also love those who love them. And if you do good to them which do good to you, what thank have you? For sinners do even also the same. Now, St. Peter talks about this in a slightly different way. He basically says, if you're uh, persecuted or hurt by people uh, for something that you do that's wrong, what's the big deal? You deserve it. But if you're persecuted when you do good, I'm just paraphrasing because I don't remember it exactly, uh, although it's made an impression on my soul, this, that scripture that I don't have memorized is, is in the heart because the idea is if you, do good to, if you do good and you get persecuted and you get hurt, this is where you get your reward, not when you uh, do good and you're rewarded. Or, and also you don't get, you don't do, get a reward for doing bad and then being punished. <laughs> you do a, a re get a reward for being good and being punished, which is, is topsy-turvy. The world doesn't understand that at all. So maybe Peter was thinking of these words he heard when he wrote his uh, sort of slight change in this commandment in his epistle. So he said, goes, the Lord goes on to say, if you do good to them which do good to you, what thank of you? Sinners do the same. And if you lend to them whom, whom you hope to receive from, what thank of you? For sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. All this is about quid pro quo. You do something good, they do something good. You're good to me, I'm good to you. You scratch my back, I scratch your back. That is not the Christian way. Now it's good in friendships to have that kind of thing. I think friendships prosper because People do good to one another mutually, symmetrically. But in the world, we don't look for everyone to be our friend. It's impossible because some people are opposed to us, but we should be their friend. We should do good to them. And what does the, what does the Lord, what does he explain about why we should do these things? He goes on to give one more commandment. Love your enemies and do good and lend, hoping for nothing again. Then he says, your reward shall be great. And for people who are worldly, including people who walk into Orthodox churches, they won't understand the reward. It's not just going to heaven. It is that you will be children of the highest. For he is kind to the unthankful and to the evil. Be ye therefore merciful as your Father is merciful. The reward is to become children of the highest. I'm struck many times when I read Lives of the Saints, when people are being tortured or threatened or put in jail or something, and they say, I am a Christian. That's their answer to the accusation. I am a Christian. That's all. That is the greatest title that you can have. 
I am a Christian. I am a child of the highest. And we are children of the highest when we act like our Father. It's a very difficult thing for us to do this. So how many of us are children in an a absolute sense? We're children in a partial sense, like a disobedient child. But we should be obedient children. Children of the highest would be those who give to those who they know are not going to give back, who are kind to those who are not kind, and who are good to everyone, regardless of what their reaction is. That's a child of the highest. Now, how in the world do you accomplish this? Not just by talking about it. It takes a great amount of labor. There was recently a question in one of the uh, posts that I've done, like a YouTube post. Somebody asked, what is labor? Because I think labor is, is a holy thing, is a wonderful thing. It's been kind of uh, given a bad name by those who have concocted a heresy that you can only, that you believe and you're saved. And that there's no labor involved whatsoever. But those who understand human nature know that labor is a, is a beautiful thing. It's a thing that, that uh, integrates you with God. It's a thing that opens your heart to God and brings in his light. So labor is not burdensome. Labor is actually uh, life-giving. It, it gives energy, doesn't take it away. And so the labor of being children of God to become a child of God is something that you must work on all the time. And it's difficult at times. I just, maybe you think I contradicted myself, but not really. Because when we are in the world, <coughs> things are difficult and burdensome for us. It's hard for us to forgive. It's hard for us to love. <coughs> it's hard for us to do good to those who don't do good to us. But then when we become holier, then when we do good to someone who does not good to us, it gives us do good to us, we get immense satisfaction. We actually drink up the, the abuse that we get as if it was honey and nectar. So I ask the question, how are you going to do this? Almost all of my sermons end up something about how are you going to do something and they're basically simple solutions, simple but not easy. But if you do them and apply yourself to them, then they become something that you can't live without. I re recently saw some comment about the Psalter. A person said, you know, because I'm always talking about reading the Psalter. And they say, they agreed with me. In the beginning, the Psalter is very difficult to understand. And it's hard to continue reading it because it, there's so many things in the Psalter that are inexplicable and that you just don't understand. But then after a while, it becomes where you just can't live without it. That is just beautiful, this sweet thing that you read. Even the parts that you don't understand are beautiful to you. But that comes from the effort. So, of course, the standard things that I tell you all the time, reading the Gospels and reading the Psalter, loving your enemies, praying for your enemies, uh, probably there's some of you that still have not made a list of people to pray for. I talk about it all the time. Have a list of people and pray for those people as part of your daily rule. You should consider that daily rule to be more important than eating. That you absolutely should pray for others, including the ones that have harmed you, living and dead, orthodox and not, doesn't matter. Anyone who's made an impression on your soul, positive or negative, in a, in a way that you remember it, you know, because we can't remember everyone we've encountered. You should pray for that person. And that will help you to become a child of the highest. That will help you to have a softer heart. And that will help you to understand what this reward is and why it is so great. To be a child of the highest is the greatest reward there is possible. To be a child of God and to be fully developed and fully formed means that there's no darkness in you. There's only light. There's no sadness, only happiness. There's no regret. There's no shame. There's only God. There's only light. There's only goodness. And there's self-control and there's all these gifts of the Spirit. And you are not a slave to anything. Now you choose to follow God with all of your might and all of your will, but you're not a slave. We call ourselves slaves of God, 
But that's really because we choose to be. We, we could choose not to be a slave. Normally, slavery, you can't choose not to be a slave. The only way you could do that is run away. And in Rome, they crucified any disobedient slaves. There were, the, the skeletons were piled high in those crucifixion pits. So we are slaves, but we choose to be slaves. So really, we're free. The children are free because we are children of God. But we choose to follow God with all of our hearts. And in that way, there's nothing that enslaves us. There's no thought that enslaves us. There's no attitude that enslaves us, no, no pleasure or uh, desire that enslaves us. It's all God. That comes from being a child of God. And I would say that doing good to those who do not good to you, do good to you, is indispensable. You cannot become a child of God, fully grown child of God, without doing that. Our whole world is full of where, if you don't do good to me, I'm not going to do good to you. But that is not the Christian way. The Christian way is to do good no matter what, because that's what our Heavenly Father does. He's good to the kind, to the unthankful, and to the evil. So we should be kind to the unthankful and the evil. Not because it's some sort of law that has been inscribed from outside. It is a law that's inscribed from inside, from within, because Christ and the Holy Spirit, the Holy Trinity, abides within us. And because of that, we should have this inner law that should motivate us to love everyone, even our enemies. And then if we do this, and we struggle to do this, it's hard. It's very hard. And sometimes maybe we'll make two steps backwards, or, and then I guess I should say it the other way around. Two steps forwards and one step backwards. Maybe we do take a couple, three steps backwards, and we have to catch up again. Because it's very hard to love people that have hurt us. It's, love, it's hard to love people that are indifferent to us, that are cruel to us. It's hard to love. Uh, the world is full of just people that are completely indifferent about the well-being of mankind. And so they are. But we must not be indifferent. We must do good to everyone. We must do unto others as we would have them do, even though they don't do. And if we do this again and again with practice, failing sometimes, but for the most part succeeding, then we will be aware of the goodness of God in our heart and we will be children of the highest and no one can take that away from you. No matter what happens in the future, whether we have persecution or not, it doesn't matter if you have God in your heart. May God help us to become children of God. Amen.